Thursday, December 30th, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today we're going to look at why the crack up boom or the hyperinflation or the currency collapse is here to stay and why mathematics uh, tells us it's uh, um, an impossibility to, to stop it. And we're going to look at the wheat and chess board problem. And you might ask, what's chess got to do with hyperinflation? Well, uh, I think you're going to find this very interesting. Just before I start, though, uh, we're seeing economists, especially left wing uh, Keynesian economists, calling for price controls. Uh, there was an article yesterday in The Guardian by uh, an economist from the University of Massachusetts. And uh, her article says, we have a powerful weapon to fight inflation, price controls. <laughs> it's time we use it. So I guess Ms. or Mrs. Uh, Weber hasn't looked at history and see that every time you uh, control price, prices of uh, real things, um, producers will produce less. They won't sell their goods because a lot of times uh, those price controls will make sure that uh, they don't make a profit for producing uh, those goods. And what's the point of selling them? So it actually has the opposite effect. It will actually uh, increase prices. And some people tweeted this out and said, well, there you go. That's socialist for you. Well, no, it's not just socialists who, who make this uh, silly mistake. President Nixon, who was a Republican, tried that in the early 70s, and it made uh, the uh, rising prices even worse, or if you want to call it inflation. So uh, that's another signal already that uh, uh, they're getting concerned that, and they think they can do it through diktat, and that won't work. I can tell you that, uh, Miss Weber. So uh, let's look at the wheat and chess board problem. So I'm going to go to uh, the origins of this story, and then we're going to look at the maths. So origins. The problem appears in different stories about the invention of chess. One of them includes the geometric progression problem. The story is first known to have been recorded in 12... 56 by Ibn Khalikan. Another version has the inventor of chess. In some tellings, Sessa, uh, an ancient Indian minister, uh, requests his ruler give him wheat according to the wheat and chessboard problem. The ruler laughs, <laughs> laughs it off as a meager prize for a brilliant invention, only to have court treasurer's reports the unexpected huge number of uh, wheat grains uh, would outstrip the ruler's resources. Versions differ as to whether the inventor becomes a high-ranking advisor or is executed. <laughs> uh, and, and it says here, McDonald also investigates the earlier development of the theme. According to Al Masudi's early, early history of India, shot Shatranj or chess was invented under an Indian king who expressed his preference for this game over backgammon. The Indians, he adds, also calculated an arithmetical progression with the squares of the chessboard. The early fondness of the Indians for enormous calculations is well known uh, to students of their mathematics and is exemplified in the writings of the great astronomer Aryabhatha, born 476 AD. An additional argument for the Indian origin of this calculation is supplied by the Arabic name of the square of the chessboard, Beit or house, for this has doubtless a historical connection with its Indian designation uh, Kosh Tagara, storehouse, or granary. So <laughs> let's go to the uh, mathematical problem now. The wheat and chessboard problem, sometimes expressed uh, in terms of rice grains, is a mathematical problem expressed 
in textual form as. If a chessboard were to have wheat placed on each square such that one grain were placed on the first square, two on the second, four on the third, and so on, doubling the number of grains on each subsequent square, how many grains of wheat would be on the chessboard at the finish? Uh, the problem may be solved using simple addition uh, with 64 squares on a chessboard if the number of grains uh, doubles on successive squares. The sum of grains on all 64 squares is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 uh, plus and so forth for the 64 squares. The total number of uh, grains can be shown to be 2 to the power of 64 minus 1 or 18 quintillion 446 quadrillion 744 trillion 73 billion 709 billion 551,615 or over 1.4 trillion metric tons, which is over 2,000 times the annual production of wheat, which in the period of 2021 was an estimated 722.64 million metric tons. So that just goes to show you uh, how the real world becomes detached from the mathematics uh, with the power of compound, compounding things, right? Of uh, the power of multiplication. And uh, so what's the chessboard signify in my opinion? Well, it signifies uh, our monetary system, our central uh, banking, uh, fiat currency, uh, fractional reserve system. Uh, we're getting to a point where, uh, in this case, the producers of real things, the owners of real thing in the world are realizing that uh, <laughs> uh, we are on this kind of chessboard and that the amount of currency and credit that's been created uh, in the last 40 years it's just like something unreal. And, and that's why I think we're in the final sta stages of the, the currency collapse, of the crack up boom, uh, or hyperinflation, if you want to call it. And, and it's why uh, prices or the value uh, of real things like commodities, precious metals, is going to go to a level that we don't really know because. Uh, these uh, values that have been created in the last 40 years are becoming more and more unreal. They're not based on reality <laughs> and they can give you all, all the excuses they want about lockdown, supply chains. It, it's not going to work out <laughs> because it's a mathematical impossibility. And it's the one of the reasons why they're trying desperate, desperately uh, to keep interest rates low and bond yields low as well. It's why they use the excuse of deflation. The excuse of deflation is uh, to keep people blind uh, about this problem that they have. <laughs> and that's why I keep going on about it. Um, so just to give you an idea of, of how silly the numbers are getting. Uh, so it took just over 200 years since the Declaration of Independence um, for the U.S. Uh, debt to be uh, around nine hundred uh, billion dollars, the national debt that was in uh, 1980, and now 40 years later, the national debt is approaching 30 trillion. Uh, yes, the GDP has grown, but not at the same pace. Uh, the GDP has not grown at, at, at the same pace as the debt. The debt has gone, grown 31 times. So it's gone from less than a trillion to almost 30 trillion. Uh, the GDP has gone from 2.6 um, trillion to just 23 trillion, which is uh, about eight times. So <laughs> the debt is getting out of hand. And uh, 
the real economy can't keep up with it. And this is just not just for the United States. This is for the whole world. And this uh, so uh, I guess back in in the day uh, when they inv invented the chess game, the guy who said to the king, all you need to give me is uh, one grain of wheat for every square, double it uh, every every 64. Uh, every square right 64 times. Uh, the king thought, oh, this is easy. This is that all, all this guy wants. But then his uh, advisors, his treasury advisors came to him and said, well, there's a problem because <laughs> you're going to have to uh, basically become a slave to this guy. <laughs> you're going to have to provide 2,000 years worth of wheat production to him. And it might have been even more at that time. For, for India. So what did the king do? Well, he, he, he maybe killed the guy or maybe he said, we, he, he just said, I don't agree with that. You, you, you can't have that, right? And, and that's what the crack up boom is, I think. Producers of real things, uh, they're gonna vote uh, against this. And that's why uh, you see prices go to infinity uh, because people are desperate to get uh, the real goods, but the producers, they're gonna like say, no, we don't wanna play the chess game anymore. We're, we don't want to, to be in the central banking uh, fiat currency um, fractional reserve system because you're taking over all our wealth uh, <laughs> and doing nothing for it. And I think that's the stage we are at and that's why, yes, right now, the price of commodities are still under control. But, but I think uh, in the future, and it's hard to know when this is going to happen, but once the public and, the, and producers wake up to this, it's going to happen very quickly. And if you're not prepared, uh, you will never be able to prepare for this, uh, I don't think. A lot of uh, mainstream economists, they're not looking at the maths and, and at the, the fact that uh, the debt and the currency is going exponential. They think that interest rates can rise and everything will be fine. Gold and silver will go back down. Commodities will go down and we'll be able to keep going. Um, yes. This was true maybe in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s uh, when the system was not as unhinged as it is now. So my conclusion is that all the paper assets that have done so well over the last 40 years, uh, they're, they're going to be obliterated. And uh, gold and silver are not that special. <laughs> the only reason they're special is that they're real. And the same thing goes for commodities and things that we need to survive. And that's why it's going to seem like uh, they're so difficult to get. They'll be precious uh, because we had 40 years of theft really through this system. And this is what the hyperinflation or the crack up boom is all about. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's quarter to 9 uh, a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 1801. It's down about three dollars. Range has been 1805 to 1796. Spot silver is down 14 cents, 2269. Uh, uh, range has been 2288 to 2258. Uh, the Dow future is unchanged. Uh, the uh, NASDAQ future is up 17 and the S&P future is unchanged. Uh, the FTSE is down 6 at 74.11. To the currencies, uh, sterling is down about 0.2% at 134.60. The euro is at 113.10, which is down a third. Uh, the dollar is up 0.2 versus the yen at 115.16. And the dollar is up about 0.1 of a percent versus the U1 at 637.50. Uh, Aussie dollar is up 0.1 of a percent, 72.59. Uh, the 
dollar is up 0.1 versus the Canadian dollar at 128.02. And the Kiwi dollar is down an eighth of a percent at 68.21. So to the commodities now, WTI crude is down slightly at 76.27. High grade copper is down uh, slightly as well, 440. So not much uh, movement there in, in the general commodities for now. And, and to finish off, the 10 year yield, uh, it's risen a little bit in the last week or so. We're back above 1.5%, we're at 154, 1.54%. And I've noticed as well that uh, yields in uh, Europe are starting to go up, the 10 year yield for gilts, as you can see here, uh, which are the UK uh, government bonds, for BTPs, which are the Italian uh, government bonds, as you can see here, they're all creeping up. Yes, they're at very low levels, but uh, don't forget, with the, whole, the debt that uh, is out there in the system, uh, yields going up is a, uh, a real big problem and that's why the uh, powers that be are going to keep inflating the system in my opinion uh the bonds as you can see as well bonds are the german government bond uh oats uh what are oats well they're the french government bonds they're all creeping up so i i think that is a big worry uh, for the powers that be so if you enjoyed this video Make sure uh, you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.